Hey everybody, back with you for day 35 for this 44-day consecration to Jesus through St. Joseph. Again, we are in the week of knowledge of Jesus Christ, and we are at week's end, and we're going to be shifting from now from knowledge of Jesus Christ to knowledge of the Holy Family. So let us begin with our litany in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Jesus, hear us. Jesus, graciously hear us. <clears throat> God, the Father of heaven, have mercy on us. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. Jesus, Son of the living God, have mercy on us. Jesus, splendor of the Father, have mercy on us. Jesus, brightness of eternal light, have mercy on us. Jesus, King of glory, have mercy on us. Jesus, Son of Justice, have mercy on us. Jesus, Son of the Virgin Mary, have mercy on us. Jesus, Most Amiable, have mercy on us. Jesus, Most Admirable, have mercy on us. Jesus, Mighty God, have mercy on us. Jesus, Father of the world to come, have mercy on us. Jesus, Angel of Great Counsel, have mercy on us. Jesus, Most Powerful, have mercy on us. Jesus, Most Patient, have mercy on us. Jesus, Most Obedient, have mercy on us. Jesus, meek and humble of heart, have mercy on us. Lover of chastity, have mercy on us. Jesus, lover of us, have mercy on us. Jesus, God of peace, have mercy on us. Jesus, author of life, have mercy on us. Jesus, example of virtues, have mercy on us. Jesus, zealous lover of souls, have mercy on us. Jesus, our God, have mercy on us. Jesus, our refuge, have mercy on us. Jesus, Father of the poor, have mercy on us. Jesus, treasure of the faithful, have mercy on us. Jesus, good shepherd, have mercy on us. Jesus, true light, have mercy on us. Jesus, eternal wisdom, have mercy on us. Jesus, infinite goodness, have mercy on us. Jesus, our way and our life, <clears throat> have mercy on us. Jesus, joy of angels, have mercy on us. Jesus, king of patriarchs, have mercy on us. Jesus, Master of the Apostles, have mercy on us. Jesus, Teacher of the Evangelists, have mercy on us. Jesus, Strength of Martyrs, have mercy on us. Jesus, Light of Confessors, have mercy on us. Jesus, Purity of Virgins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Crown of Saints, have mercy on us. Be merciful, spare us, O Jesus. Be merciful, graciously hear us, O Jesus. From all evil, deliver us, O Jesus. From all sin, deliver us, O Jesus. From your wrath, deliver us, O Jesus. From the snares of the devil, deliver us, O Jesus. From the spirit of fornication, deliver us, O Jesus. From everlasting death, deliver us, O Jesus. From the neglect of your inspirations, deliver us, O Jesus. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, deliver us, O Jesus. By your nativity, deliver us, O Jesus. By your infancy, deliver us, O Jesus. By your most divine life, deliver us, O Jesus. By your labors, deliver us, O Jesus. By your agony and passion, deliver us, O Jesus. By your cross and dereliction, deliver us, O Jesus. By your sufferings, deliver us, O Jesus. By your death and burial, deliver us, O Jesus. By your resurrection, deliver us, O Jesus. By your ascension, deliver us, O Jesus. By your institution of the Most Holy Eucharist, deliver us, O Jesus. By your joys, deliver us, O Jesus. By your glory, deliver us, O Jesus. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, spare us, O Jesus. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, graciously hear us, O Jesus. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, O Jesus. Jesus, hear us. Jesus, graciously hear us. Lord Jesus Christ, you have said, ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be open to you. Grant we beg of you to us who ask of it the gift of your most divine love, that we may ever love you with our whole heart and word and deed and never cease praising you. Give us, Lord, as much a lasting fear as a lasting love of your holy name. For you who live and are king forever and ever, never fail to govern those whom you have solidly established in your love. Amen. <clears throat> Jumping into the reflection today on divine mercy. In my experience, the single deepest wound in our hearts of those I treat in therapy has to do with being and worth. The truth is, human beings are created out of the image of God, molded in the form of Jesus in his humanity, formed with this mark of the divine. 
This is what gives us value. We have it from the very moment of our conception. The existence of a unique DNA code signifying the existence of a new person is infinitely more valuable than the largest and most perfect diamond on earth. This truth, however, needs to be taught to us by our parents <clears throat> or those who raise us when we are children, forming our first sense of self and identity. We are not typically given the perfect combination of attention and autonomy, love and limits that nurture this correct sense of self. Most of us grow up with the inst instability of the weakness of others who respond to us unintentionally based on our actions instead of our being. We learn that it is what we do that makes us valuable, not who we are. We grow up feeling that if we could lose or gain more value based on our actions, there must not be any inherent value we possess based on simply on our being. This is diametrically opposed to the reality of our creation and what God wants us to know about ourselves. Our actions matter, but not the way that we think. Jesus does not ask us to be perfect before we go to him. He does not expect us to be perfect before he will come to us. He is madly in love with us as we are. He offers this love to us, which is the only authentic reason to go to him. And that love perfects us. This is the difference between a dad teaching us we are good and we want to be good to live up to this identity and a dad withholding his affection and validation until we've shown him that we are good. St. Joseph taught Jesus he was good as he was, who he was without having to do anything. The being of Jesus drew Joseph and Mary's contemplation, awe and captivated love. You share that same humanity with Jesus. Your being should also draw contemplation, awe, and captivated love. Jesus is madly in love with you, you as you are, not you as you ought to be. Only in relationship with Jesus, receiving the love of God without deserving it, can you be transformed. God has been teaching his people this message since he created Adam and Eve. There are great biblical studies that explore this story in great depth. See Scott Hahn's book, A Father Who Keeps His Promises. The New Testament flows from the Old Testament seamlessly, and Jesus is the full manifestation of this love of God. He did not stop 2,000 years ago, though. For centuries, he has continued to unfold the intricate delicacies of his love for us. <clears throat> We've already touched on the revelations of Jesus and his sacred heart to St. Margaret Mary Alacoque in the 17th century, the unfolding of God's mercy in history continued with St. Therese of Lisieux in the 19th century. There are plenty of lesser known saints in between as well. For example, St. Teresa Margaret of the Sacred Heart from the 18th century. The 20th century brought us St. Faustina and her diary of divine mercy. It seems that with every new century, Jesus is making it clearer and clearer how radical his love and mercy is for us. Because we think we have to be perfect before we can have a relationship with God. We miss out on what God's love is really all about. Father Michael Gately, MIC, says, Jesus' heart is particularly moved with compassion when he sees anguished souls stuck at the bottom of the rough stairway to perfection. His heart absolutely breaks when he further sees so many of these souls falling into the pits of discouragement, despondency, and even despair. In fact, this situation has become too much for him. It caused him to snap once again. For this time, he does more than simply reveal his heart as he did to St. Margaret Mary. This time, the arms of his heartfelt compassion reach down to embrace such little souls and carry them to the heights of holiness as he taught to St. Therese, quote, consoling the heart of Jesus. St. <clears throat> Therese taught the spirituality known as the little way. In short, our weaknesses become our strengths. Think of two daughters who break something that belongs to their father. When he comes home, one runs and hides because she fears him, and the other jumps into her father's arms with tears telling him how sorry she is. One daughter broke the father's heart, the other consoled it. Which do you think it was? It turns out there are two ways to deny God's love and mercy. The first has to do with our pride or maybe insecurity, 
feeling that we don't need to ask for forgiveness or submit ourselves to any higher authority. We like to imagine that we are in control. It makes us feel better to ignore our weaknesses and pretend that we have all the answers. The second way to deny God's love and mercy can be a bit more insidious. We start with a recognition of our weaknesses and sin, which is a good thing, but then we feel that we are beyond that mercy of God. We believe we are too sinful, damaged to the core, unworthy of being in a close relationship with God. This happens often to people who are striving along the path of perfection, who submit themselves to God's authority, recognize their need for him, but then start to focus too much on their own imperfections. This is just another form of pride. This is what drove Judas to hang himself. If only Judas had given in to Christ's love, he would have been forgiven. St. John Paul II recognized this story unfolding in time and history and implemented the Sunday after Easter to be Divine Mercy Sunday. This is in direct recognition of the apparitions of Divine Mercy to St. Faustina, but really encompasses the unfolding of this beautiful love song that God is singing to us. <clears throat> he is serenading us one century at a time. Take a break from your busy life where you are either running away from your weakness by pretending to be in control or running away from your weakness by trying to prove your worth and listen to Jesus tell you that he is strong in your weakness, that he loves you in your weakness to stop running away from your weaknesses. Let's stop this rumination for a moment and see if we can hear his song. <clears throat> Anytime we get to reflect on divine mercy is always a nice establishment in his care for us. You know, I, I think um, I do agree with Dr. Bataro in this uh, in this treatment of mercy. There are two ways to deny God's love and mercy. The first has to do with our pride or maybe insecurity, feeling that we don't need to ask for forgiveness or submit ourselves to any higher authority. We like to imagine that we are in control. It makes us feel better to ignore our weakness and pretend that we have all the answers. <clears throat> I think that's I think that's um, certainly a part of something that I can I can experience. Um, there's a variation though, like within that one in particular that I've seen, and it's like, well, Father, I don't kill anybody, you know, I don't do you know, and and like that's that's that treatment of you know we're in control. Like, no, like we should be looking at our sins and treating our, treating our sins very sincerely as offensive to our father, as wounding to the body of Christ. You know, when we could realize, you know, what may seemingly, you know, strike us as insignificant, you know, like the sensitivity that parents show in their discipline of their children and expressing that, you know, behavior is hurting them. Um, even if it's isolated behavior, if a, a teenager is acting up or, you know, um, you know, someone hasn't talked to their parents and, and, you know, a year, two, three, four, five years, well, it's, you know, it's better that I stay far away. Well, like all of that is offensive to God. All of that is offensive to Jesus. And it's certainly offensive to our parents. And they feel that sensitivity. And, and at times when we live myopically and isolated in our own mindset, we can grow dull in our treatment of sin, of our treatment of self and our examination of conscience. Sin is sin before God, whether it's venial or mortal. Yeah, there's different gravities that can be attached to these sins. The, the, you know, but the greater the sinner, the more that sinner has claimed to God's mercy, as St. Faustina expresses but we have to recognize our sins. And that's the important factor here, not to brush over our sins and control. Oh, I'm not that bad. <clears throat> no, but to treat them seriously. Mm -hmm. So before we go any further, I just want to pop out the chat and say hello to the people that are here. I've got 33 people <clears throat> and I got 16 thumbs up. So if you take a moment just down below, give me a thumbs up and make sure that you're hitting subscribe. <clears throat> Thursday blessings to you as well, Margaret and Pat. Good morning, everyone. Lorraine, LP, Sharon. It is such a blessing to be with you. Christine and Professor Frank, Margaret, great to have you. Mila and Gracie Therese, St. Faustina, pray for us. Amen. Thank you, Father Rich. So good to be with you as well. It is good to be with you, Jim, Jacqueline and Chris. Karen, feeling blessed. I'm joining you in that two days in a row live. And I love today's lesson, as I do as well. 
I just absolutely love diving into divine mercy each and every day. And when people express like, Father Rich, you know, you've got you've got a lot of joy. <clears throat> it doesn't mean that I'm joyful like 24 hours a day, seven days a week. But if there is a cause to my joy, it's the mercy of Jesus, without a doubt. And my sister, Sister Faustina, <clears throat> she's a joy to me. Chris Flaherty, good morning. Karen, <clears throat> Myla Thomas, Rose, good to have you on here as well. Kitty, so good to see you, Kitty, on here as well. And thank you so much for your support. Lorraine, go flashes. I love it. Got to support the oldest Catholic school in the state of Florida, St. Joseph Academy. <clears throat> what wonderful work in 1888 when the Sisters of St. Joseph est established the great school of St. Augustine. <clears throat> Say a little prayer for the academy and the kids today. Tony, good to have you on here. Um, you know, Christine shared something very important. She said, this consecration is revealing my sin blind spots big time. That's exactly what we need. You know, when we could be conscientious of our own sin and really interact with one another in a loving way to help each other grow, you know, I, I welcome constructive criticism, right? I evaluate it. I examine it. I pray over it. Right? That's why I try to go to spiritual direction. That's why I have mentors. That's why I read, I read different books that challenge my leadership style and all sorts of all sorts of things. You know, like this, uh, this is a great book here, Servant Leader. You know, <clears throat> when I'm on vacation, I like to kind of do an assessment, go to confession. <clears throat> so I'm looking forward to going to confession this weekend and then just kind of be reinvigorated, you know. <clears throat> so <clears throat> I love Divine Mercy as well. And Elizabeth Share, Father Rich, would you please send birthday greetings to my daughter, Mary Kate, on her 19th birthday. She and I are doing the consecration with you. Elizabeth, how awesome. Mary Kate, God bless you. And I pray that God fills you with the gift of gratitude in your heart and that he grants you an abundance of grace so that your gifts may continue to develop to the greater glory of his name. Happy birthday. And let's lift up Mary Kate, my brothers and sisters on her birthday. And we got to celebrate you too, Elizabeth, because you gave birth to her. You labored and suffered her into this world. And your heart has rejoiced because of the gift that she is. So we rejoice with you. Laureen shared, I have this distance and fear towards intimacy and complete trust with men. And that is something that, that Christ wants to address. When you look at uh, the woman at the well, when you look at Mary Magdalene, when you look at the women that Jesus drew close to, especially, you know, the, the woman caught in adultery, you know, the woman who had five husbands, you know, and is not with any, you know, there's wounds there. There's wounds in Mary Magdalene. <clears throat> you know, one of the one of the traditions was that she was uh, raped by a Roman soldier, you know, Um that, you know, th there's there's a, a lot of weight that is carried within our wounds, whether masculine wounds, whether feminine wounds. Well, Jesus wants to address those in us, you know, father wounds, mother wounds, relationship wounds. You know, Jesus wants to alleviate and heal our heart. And if we don't go through healing with him, what happens is the, de the demoniac influences, the demonic influences begin to aggravate that wound. And then what happens in that aggravation, we begin to wound anybody that draws close to us in intimacy. So we have to pray, pray, pray for one another, especially if we see that insecurity. If we see that violence around the wounds that we that we have, first recognizing that and then taking the wounds to Jesus for him to treat with his mercy. It is his mercy that heals. Thank you, everybody, for the happy birthday to Mary Kate <clears throat> and 10 days left in this amazing consecration. I know it's incredible how fast this has gone, my brothers and sisters. So jumping into the questions today. <clears throat> Do you typically avoid your weakness by pretending you are in control or feeling that you need to earn the strength of having worth? I think we kind of covered that just before. Like, I do see that quite a bit, you know? Um, I do genuinely try to do an assessment each and every day, you know, an examine of consciousness like St. Ignatius would, would share with us. <clears throat> I try to examine my conscience before I go to confession, and I try to go every three weeks, certainly once a month. 
Um, if I can, I go more, especially if I'm struggling through something. But, you know, I'd never want to treat my personal sins with laxity. Oh, I'm in control. I'm not, you know, I'm not that bad. It's, it, there could be, it could be worse. And, you know, I'm not as bad as that person coveting. Right? Whenever we do that, pride is, is really uh, pulling the blinders over our eyes. You know, and I think I think the author of the book, Dr. Potaro, in this section, um, really illuminates that for us. So I'm I'm grateful for us, I'm grateful for that. You know, he, Christ calls us to be to treat our sins with seriousness. I mean, Jesus died for our sins. I can't imagine anything more serious than that. So we, we truly do Him honor and reverence when we recognize how we are wounding the body of Christ. How are we defaming, defacing, dishonoring our temple, the temple of our bodies? You are a temple of the Holy Spirit, but what do you allow in your temple? What incense do you offer in your temple? You know, all of these things to consider. If the former, how can you submit yourself in one way today to the reality that you do not have the control you would like? If the latter, how can you submit yourself in one way today to the reality that God's love is bigger than your imperfections? <laughs> St. Faustina. Jesus's mercy is like the ocean. And as far advanced as we are, you know, with SpaceX and artificial intelligence, with modern means of communication to even be able to do this. And we have not explored the very depths of the ocean. We don't have the ability to, the core of the earth. There's so many mysteries still in this world, you know. And the greatest mystery in this world is that Jesus came here and he exposed and manifested mercy itself. That's where I am. I am very much on a scientific inquiry. I'm certainly on an adventure into the depths of his mercy. I don't want to go anywhere else. You know, some days are difficult. Some days I turn up the turbulent waters all around me by my own personal sin or the chaos of the world comes crashing into the boat. But I'm going to continue to plummet the very depths of God's mercy, and I hope that you join with me. Now, before I let you go, make sure you hit that subscribe, click the bell. Every time we go live, it will notify you. Every time we celebrate a mass that we stream, it will notify you. Please give me a few thumbs up, and I really appreciate it, and I will see you tomorrow morning. God bless.